What's going on guys, it's Michael here and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today we have a freshly remastered Skyrim build and we've made some big changes to make the character far more powerful and way more fun to roleplay. The backstory is fully fleshed out for roleplaying goodness and there are a bunch of new skills and perks to add to your arsenal. This is the Warden. The Warden is a traveler, a kind and charitable healer in a continent overrun with destruction, corruption and death. This Khajiit protects those in need, using his knowledge of medicine and alchemy to save lives, while simultaneously showing no tolerance for evildoers, crushing them with his mighty mace. If you are a good person, the Warden will guard you, and if you're fueled by hate or domination, he will destroy you. And that is the code of this honorable battle mage. He doesn't care for politics, preferring to look after those poor souls betrayed by the promises of their so-called leaders. Before we get into the build, don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description to help you find your way around the video, as well as the link to our social media and our Patreon if you want to support us. But with that said, let's get right into the Warden's race, standing stone, and stats. The Warden is a Khajiit, which means he gains a start game bonus of plus 5 to alchemy and one-handed. He can also use his night eye to see in the dark, and his claws have 15 points of unarmed damage if you're interested in using that, probably at the start of the game for the most fun. Anyway, early in the game, use the Lover Stone to level your various skills, but after that, switch to the Atronarch Stone. There is little Really no downside to this stone as the recovery perk from the restoration tree makes up for the 50% decrease to magicka regen. This means you can utilize the 50% spell absorption and 50 extra points of magicka worry free. The warden's stat spread will be 60% health and 40% magicka, but this will only be until you get around 75% of your 100% goal of your fortify restoration enchantments, and then you can drop focusing on magicka altogether and focus purely on health. Don't worry about stamina as this will be covered by the rest respite perks, your stamina potions, and your various beneficial enchantments. The Warden was born on the road, quite literally. His family were part of a large Khajiit trading caravan, and when his mother went into labor, they halted their journey to deliver him into the world. From the moment he opened his eyes for the very first time, the Warden was watching the world go by, traveling Tamriel with an odd bunch of merchants, soothsayers, alchemists, and sellswords. Growing up, the Warden was never lacking for mental or physical stimulation. His youthful energy was the perfect fit for life on the road, especially considering the fact that no traders covered as much ground as the Khajiit traders did. In order to make him tough, responsible, and capable of taking care of himself, the Warden's parents made no effort to restrict where he could and could not roam, what he could and couldn't do, or who he spoke to. And for the young Warden, that meant he had the opportunity to choose which of the adult Khajiit merchants he would trouble with his boundless energy and curiosity. The arms dealer interested the Warden. He was a huge mountain of a Khajiit with arms like anvils. When he wasn't sleeping, he was protecting the caravan, and when they stopped to sell their wares, he was in town using the forge. But it was a different merchant who got the Warden's attention. Each night, they would put up their tents to sleep for the night, and the Warden would wander around to each one, peeking in and often invading privacy. One tent smelled unlike all the others. Rather than canvas and leather, this tent smelled of exotic fruits, bitter berries, and a plethora of sinus tickling spices. Inside was a wily dark furred Khajiit with bright green eyes. His name was Sarashi, and he was the caravan's alchemist and healer. The warden was fascinated by Sarashi and his practices, and the wizened merchant told him that, when passing through common villages and towns, nothing was in higher demand than potions sworn to heal ailments, and the healing hand of a doctor. The warden wanted to learn everything, and Sarashi humored him, making use of his enthusiasm by sending him to gather ingredients on their travels. The warden would be given a list of flowers and ingredients to find on the roadside, depending on the province they were passing through, and then he would show the Warden how he turns them into potions. He even taught the Warden some basic restoration, and the Warden, with a brain like a new sponge, took to it extremely quickly. This was the way of things for many years, until in his early adolescence, the caravan found itself passing through Hammerfell for what the Warden had counted to be his tenth time. The Warden knew that his parents loved Hammerfell. It reminded them of home due to the warm climate. His parents told him they planned to leave the caravan at Dragonstar, leaving the caravan before it made its way to High Rock. The Warden was too young to stay on his own, and while lenient with responsibility, his parents had no intention of leaving their son behind. The Warden made the rounds, saying goodbye to the many traders he'd considered his family for as long as he'd been alive. The hardest farewell was with Sarashi. The old cat had never portrayed his emotions clearly to the Warden in the past, but underneath the thick fur and wrinkles he could see sadness. Sarashi 
had been a second father to him, and clearly the merchant had thought the same thing. After a long embrace, Sarashi gave him some advice, telling him to nurture his knowledge of alchemy and healing, so that when it was time to inevitably get caught up in Tamriel's many conflicts, he wouldn't be overcome by a thirst for bloodshed, but instead will help those in need of his skills. For the rest of his teenage years, the Warden was quite lonely. There were many his age in Dragonstar, but he'd grown up around Khajiit and eccentric merchant types at that. He continued pursuing alchemy and healing, but also used his new Redguard peers as a way to learn to fight and protect himself. Soon enough, the Warden found himself yearning for adventure again. He'd spent his whole life in motion, and he found himself quickly growing tired of the static nature of Dragonstar. News of the ongoing conflict between Hammerfell and the Aldmeri Dominion had been growing more and more frequently of late. War devastated southern Hammerfell, and there was the very real concern that it may spread north to his new home. Seeing this as an opportunity, the Warden joined the conflict as an unlikely supporter of the Red Guard cause. Though deep down, he really had no investment in the reasons for the conflict. He dared not admit he didn't really know what the White Gold Concordat was in the first place. With a pack full of potions and a sloppily forged iron mace, the Warden joined the fray in the south. The Warden witnessed a bloody skirmish from the rear lines. He was tasked with seeing to as many of the Red Guards fallen, getting them to safety or, if possible, back on their feet. The Warden burned through almost all of his potions by the time the fighting ceased, and when all of the Altmar had either died or fled, the Red Guards cheered and made their way back to camp. The Warden knelt down to repack his equipment, allowing the soldiers to get a head start on him. When they were nearly out of sight behind the layer of disturbed dust that clung to the air, the Warden made his way to the southern end of the battlefield, where the soldiers of the Dominion were scattered dead and dying in the sand. He saw movement. A high elf with a gash in his lower torso reached out a shaking hand, miming for the Warden to help as he didn't have the power to cry out. The Warden knelt by the Altma. If he were seen tending to the enemy, using their resources on their foes, he would be ostracized or worse, killed for being a traitor. Sarashi's last words to him resonated in his mind, and the Warden took the risk. He used what magicka he had left to cast a spell on the afflicted area, before gently pouring a healing potion through the elf's dry cracked lips. He would live. Maybe he'd return home to make the most of his life, or maybe he would return to the Dominion battle camps. Either way, the Warden wouldn't stop him. After serving with the Red Guards for a year, the Warden decided it was time for a change of scenery. His skills could be put to use elsewhere, so he headed northeast to the war-torn province of Skyrim. Men would be dying in the thousands, fighting on behalf of leaders who didn't necessarily care for their well-being. His journey was a mostly trouble-free one. Traveling was something he knew. He was born to it. The only thing that impeded him was something totally out of his control. He was caught in a skirmish between an Imperial Patrol and some Nords. He could have stayed unseen in the Howling Blizzard, but instead he came when the fighting was finished to help the wounded. An Imperial spotted him healing a Stormcloak and placed him under arrest. Despite being wrongly imprisoned as a treasonous Stormcloak and nearly killed as a result, the Warden will try to harbor no ill will against the Imperials. He knows what war does to common people, and were he to let their actions provoke him, he'd be no better than every other mindless soldier. Going forward, the Warden will simultaneously work on improving his combat skills further to protect himself from the abundance of evildoers and murderous opportunists in Skyrim, and he'll try to work on his alchemy and healing. He will be without his equipment after Helgen, and despite traveling the province several times in the past, he is not as familiar with the alchemical ingredients here as he is with the ones in Hammerfell, so it will take him a little while to become effective again. But once he is, he will protect innocents, heal well-meaning commoners caught up in someone else's war, and use his skill with a mace to take down bandits and monsters who endanger the good people of Skyrim. He will get involved with the Dragonborn prophecy and he sees improving his own power as the best way to ensure he makes Skyrim a better, safer place to live. So for quest lines, the main story in the Dragonborn DLC are definitely on the agenda. Any quest lines like Dawnguard where there is a clear difference between good and evil, he will side with good. So he will side with the Dawnguard in the Dawnguard DLC. The College of Winterhold will help him improve his healing abilities and also teach him wards spells, and the companions are also an option, though the werewolf curse is a bit too unpredictable. You can do what you like with that. He wouldn't want to become a monster and risk harming innocents. With the Warden's backstory, role-playing, and faction sorted, let's take a look at how that'll impact his skills, spells, perks, and his overall playstyle. The main skills for this build will be one-handed, restoration, heavy armor, smithing, and then our two new additions, enchanting and alchemy. The Warden will be pretty much using all the healing spells, the main one of these being closed wounds, as it is generally the most effective for self-healing. Then he'll use Circle of Protection against the Undead and Greater Ward to help him deal with spellcasters, and it's a simple 
simple as that. So now let's see the essential perks to take from each of his skills. While Bloodshed is generally a last resort for this peacekeeper, the Warden isn't naive, and he knows that dealing with bad apples who pose a serious threat to the well-being of the people is often the best way to protect. It's fortunate then that he happened to spend a large chunk of his life around Redguard Warriors. From the one-handed skill tree, take the middle branch up to Savage Strike. Once again, this is a straightforward and effective path for getting the best results with only 7 perk points invested. Savage Strike will add 25% damage to your standing power attacks and give you the chance to amputate or more accurately decapitate an enemy. Next, we have Restoration, and this skill will be occupying the Warden's offhand. Healing has been of huge importance to the Warden ever since the day he stumbled into Sarashi's tent, and now he lives his life by this school of magic. From the Restoration Tree, take everything except for Master Restoration and avoid death. That includes both ranks of Recovery, which will improve Magicka Regen by a solid 50%, countering the negative effect of the Atronarch Stone. You will also have the Ward Absorb effect, which allows you to absorb 25% of all incoming magicka that hits your ward. For the Warden to protect others, he can't afford to use all of his healing potions on himself. Therefore, he made it a priority to find the best possible armor in his adventures. From the Heavy Armor skill tree, take the left hand branch. Perks like Conditioning will prevent you from being slowed down as a result of wearing bulky armor. Part of being a diverse trading caravan has its benefits, and for the Warden, this meant he was exposed to all of the various profitable trades and crafts prevalent in Tamriel. Thanks to this, he has proficient knowledge of both smithing and enchanting, allowing him to hugely improve his equipment. From the smithing skill tree, take arcane blacksmith and the right hand branch up to ebony smithing. And then from the enchanting skill tree, take the middle branch up to and including extra effect. With all of these mentioned perks, your armor, mace and jewelry will make you infinitely more formidable on the battlefield and will help reduce restoration costs to keep you healing constantly or casting wards constantly. Lastly, we have alchemy. This explorer and alchemist's apprentice knows ingredients better than most. He knows the flora better than those who lived in the province their entire lives thanks to the guidance of Sarashi. From the alchemy skill tree, take the entire right branch as this focuses on potions. Experimenter is both very useful and very fitting for roleplaying, allowing you to reveal all four effects of an ingredient by consuming it once. And with all of that out of the way, here's how the skills, spells, and perks will fit into the Warden's playstyle. The Warden will drink a potion to strengthen in his wards and he'll poison his mace before running into battle with a ward in his offhand and his mace in his right hand. Use wards frequently against mages and dragons and remember that once you have all of your enchantments you'll be able to cast your ward permanently. You can even dual wield the ward or your healing spells for added effectiveness. Whether you're trying to stay alive or have no mages to fight, the other option is to put away the ward, switching your left hand to healing spells. The respite perk allows these spells to also restore stamina so it's great for offense as well as defense. Power attack, heal, power attack, heal if you want. Straightforward but very effective. Also, if there are no mages around, you can also use a potion of fortify one-handed instead of a ward potion for added damage. As for gear, wear a full set of smithed up heavy style rim armor, minus the helmet. In its place, use a moonstone circlet, then add a necklace and ring of your choice, but sapphires I think suit the armor quite nicely. Enchant as much of this as possible with fortify restoration. With four pieces, you can total 100% cast cost reduction. And then use things like Fortify One-Handed and Fortify Stamina. Your weapon of choice will be a Style Rim Mace, smithed up and enchanted with Absorb Stamina and Absorb Magicka. The only other thing to remember is plenty of created potions. These can be Fortify Restoration for your wards, Fortify Stamina or Stamina Regen, Healing Potions for when you want HP but don't want to put away your ward, and Fortify One-Handed Potions. You can then add a poison of your choosing to the mace. And I should also mention with the mace enchantment that after you have 100% cast reduction for restoration, you could re-enchant another smithed up style rim mace with absorb magicka and something else of your choice. Perhaps even absorb health. There you have it guys, subscribe to Fudge Muppet and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description for video navigation along with links to our social media accounts and our Patreon. Follow us on Twitter for more fudgy goodness. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name's Michael and I'll see you next time.